Hello YouTube, RJ. I got a few projects out of the way and it's time to get back on our HF transceiver design. So in previous videos we designed, built, and tested the broadcast filter, the 11.0592 MHz Crystal IF filter, and the double balanced diode mixer. Now we are going to dive into the magic of the duplexer. What it does, how it does it, and why we need one. Then we will use special software to get the values of the components needed for our frequency. Put that into LT Spice to test and tweak, and then we'll see where we go from there. To explain what a duplexer does, I first want to start with an explanation of a very similar device, the audio crossover. In this image, you see such a device. The speaker cabinet has two speakers in it to produce audio frequencies, one for high frequencies and one for low frequencies. Each is specially designed to excel at its frequency range. Because the input will have all frequencies produced in the one input signal, it is important to be able to divide the signal into two different signals switching over at a point where the low frequencies end and the high begin. This is the crossover frequency. Now if we look at this arrangement in a more schematic look, we see that it is simply two filters, a low pass filter and a high pass filter. The low pass filter allows the low frequencies to easily enter the woofer or the low frequency speaker. It makes it difficult for the high frequencies to pass into the speaker. The high pass filter does the opposite by allowing the higher frequencies to easily enter the tweeter or high frequency speaker, while making it difficult for the lower frequencies to enter it. Now that you have an understanding of the crossover circuit, it is very easy to understand the diplexer as it is basically the same with a small difference. If we look at the symbol of a diplexer, it looks as if it works exactly like the crossover circuit. It has an input that connects to what appears to be a low pass filter and a high pass filter with outputs for both. In fact, some diplexers used in antenna systems do work like this. They pass lower frequencies to one antenna on an output and pass higher frequencies onto another antenna. These are sometimes called duplexers instead of diplexers. They are a low pass, high pass filter type of diplexer. This is not the type we need for our radio. The type we need would be better represented if the symbol looked like this. This is not a real symbol. It is one I made to represent the difference. This is a second type of diplexer called the bandpass bandstop diplexer. In this set of filters, the bandpass filter allows all frequencies in a certain range or band to pass through with little effort or impedance, while creating large impedances to all other frequencies. The second filter, called a band stop, prevents frequencies in a certain range or band to pass as it creates large impedances to the signals in these frequencies while allowing all others to pass with little effort due to low impedances. Now let's jump on the computer and look at how I designed such a diplexer. Okay, we're on my desktop, and here I have a program shortcut called Diplexer. We open up Diplexer Design, and this is the piece of software I've been using to design diplexers. It's made by James Tun. Um, I'll put a link to where you can download it. I'm running version 2.14. I think that's the most current at the moment. Anyway, when we open it up, we have a choice to make. And here we can see the examples of the two different types of diplexer I spoke about. Here is our low pass, high pass design. This is the one we're not going to use in the radio. This would be good for antennas if you had two antennas and you were trying to separate different frequency signals. Over here is what's called the bandpass band stop designer. This is what we want to work with. And I've already done the work ahead of time on this, but I'm going to walk you through how it works. So basically you choose band pass band stop designer, and it's going to come up with some default stuff in here and you're going to have to fill in what you want. Now, we're only doing a first order filters. Um, I don't mess with the A pass. Basically, we know we have 50 ohms we're looking for, so we'll leave it there, 50 ohm impedance. And what we have to do is tell the filter what we want the lower and higher edge to be. Basically, you're telling it the frequencies you want it to work within. And so you're gonna play with this, and you can see I'm saying 10.13 and 12.05. I've played with these to get the outcome I want. So what happens is you put, you put in the frequency that you want to see at the low end of your filter and at your high end of your filter and then you hit plot and what you'll get is this. It's showing us in the the blue color here you see transmission bandpass. 
in the Regency transmission band stop. Here's your frequency scale down here. Now there's some different setup. The plot setup, you can change where it starts and ends, how many steps, and whether it's linear or log. And I do linear, I like it to be more even. And you can change what the lowest dB it shows on the graph you want. And you can tweak it in here. So I've set it up since I'm looking for about 11. It's actually 11.0592 is where I'm looking for. I've set it to start at 9 megahertz and go through 13 megahertz. So return back. If I was to change this, let's say that instead of 10.13, I put in 9.5. You can see how the how everything shifts. You're going to start out, you're going to start out and work to find where it think what what spread you're looking for. To get what to get the outcome you want now basic filters are usually measured at a negative 3 db point so basically what you're saying is hey where what frequency am i looking for negative 3 db here and here the lower and upper edge and that's how you tweak this thing around if we go in here to markers i can bring up a marker and put in a single marker at 11.05 megahertz which is where we want our where our crystal filter is that's the frequency we want this thing to pass so we hit show and you'll see we're pretty well dead on it i played with this until i'm happy with what i've got and i say okay you know this is the plot i'm happy that's what i want I'll go to design and it'll give you the schematic with the values it believes you need. It's it's really that straightforward. From that, basically, I can go into LT Spice and create this and play with the numbers to get me where LT Spice believes will be precisely where I need. Let me uh, stop and I'll jump over. We'll open up LT Spice and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, you can see I'm in LT Spice now and I've designed the circuit. And I'm going to head label things. We're going to talk first about we're, we're talking about diplexers and what they are, and we're starting to design one. Let's talk about what they do and why we want one. Diplexers, as I've shown you, split different frequencies off into two different directions. What would you do with one? Well, in our radio, what we're going to do with one is we're going to take our mixer here, the mixer output, and instead of running that straight into our crystal filter, we're going to put a diplexer in between the two of them. Now, why would I do that? Well, here's the benefit of that. Our crystal filter is 50 ohms impedance input at 11.0592 megahertz. We, we've designed it that way. But as soon as you move away from these frequencies, the input impedance is going to be dramatically different. The frequencies that are going to be coming off the mixer is not going to be 11.0592 exclusively. We're going to have a number of frequencies coming off of the mixer. We're going to have our you know, two frequencies mixed together, the, the positive of those, the negative of those. You're going to have some harmonics going on. You're going to have quite a bit of different frequencies coming out of your mixer. And so the problem you get into is if you feed this mixer straight into the crystal filter, while this 11.0592 frequency will easily pass cleanly into your crystal with no SWR, no reflected signal back, these other signals are going to see quite a high SWR at this point and are going to be reflected back into your mixer. Now, if that happens, the negative of that is that those fre frequencies go back in, reflected back into our mixer, and they again mix with products, create products and mixes, come out with a whole bunch of additional and they increase the different frequency signals we don't want. We really don't want that. We don't want reflected signals back into our mixer. We want to get rid of everything coming out of this mixer. So now we know that the 11.0592 megahertz signal is going to pass right in. This resistor right here is a representation of the crystal filter. It, it looks like a 50 ohm resistor to my mixer. But we have to do something with all those other frequencies. So remember what a bandpass bandstop filter does. As a diplexer, it looks at this point right here in the circuit, it looks at the frequencies here and it says, okay, if your 11.0592 are very close to that, come on through. You have a very easy time, very low impedance coming in. So my crystal filter gets just the frequencies it wants. All the other frequencies that would normally bounce back into my mixer, reflect back in and cause problems. 
finds a very low impedance path through the band stop filter. If it's not 11.0592 or very close, it finds a very easy path through here to a 50 ohm resistor on the diplexer. Now, we know the crystal filter is 50 ohms at 11.0592, but what's the resistor? It's 50 ohm at any frequency. Resistors are frequency independent. So basically what we're saying is, we're taking this in and saying, everything for my crystal filter, the frequency I want here, comes into my crystal filter. Cleanly runs in, no reflection. Everything else goes through the band stop side with very low impedance into a 50 ohm resistor, which is a matched impedance. So no reflections come back through this way. So basically what we get is we kill all the reflection coming back to our mixer output for a much cleaner output. That's why we want to use this diplexer. It gives me a 50 ohm at all frequencies for the most part. And that allows this mixer to be a very happy camper, which is exactly what we're looking for. The other thing this does for me is this is a filter. It, again, not only makes it where the, that signal comes through easily at the right frequency, it's this filter is blocking everything else. So my crystal filter gets just what I want. No harmonics, nothing. Everything else goes to ground through this resistor. So that's why the diplexer is important and what it's going to do for us. Let's take a look at what we're doing here. We'll analyze a circuit and see how it looks. And then you can better see what I'm talking about. What we have here is our mixer output represented as a voltage source. It's got a output impedance of 50 ohms, I've told it here. I've told it to do an AC sweep and output between 9 megahertz and 13 megahertz for our testing. It'll sweep through and send the signals and we'll be able to actually analyze this. So here's my band pass, here's my band stop. Let's go ahead and analyze this. So if I simulate this circuit, and then say, okay, let me see what comes through here to my crystal filter. Now, here is zero dB at this point here, and it is precisely zero dB right at this point. So let's go ahead and click my cursor on, move up here, and you'll see that right about where I want it, here's your frequency, I'm minus 18 milli dB. So basically zero dB, if you will. So I'm letting everything at this frequency through. I'm blocking nothing. But the moment I start moving very far away from this, I'm going to start seeing that signal drop. And my 3 dB point is going to be about 10.029. So that is what's coming out of here. You're letting all of the signal at the frequency you want come through. And as you start moving away, you start start putting impedance in its way and blocking it from coming through. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this. Let's run the simulation again and let's look at what comes through to the resistor now. Now this is quite different. It lets very low impedance, it lets everything come through until you get close to 11.0592 and look at what happens. It blocks it very strongly at that frequency. So the signal we want can't make it through here. Signals outside of that easily make it through there. That's exactly what we talked about and exactly what we're looking for. So another thing we can do is, let me, uh, let me get rid of this again. So what happens if I click up here and say, add trace, I've got Z out V1. Here's V1 right here. So click that, that's gonna show me my impedance. It's going to come up in dB because we're on the wrong scale. So let me click over here and choose linear. Now it's giving me ohms, right? Well, if we come over here and 49 ohm is right here. So just barely above that line would be 50. And we come over and where is that at? What point is that at? Well, let's move our cursor over there and find out. Well, it would be right about 11.05. We get 50 ohms here right where we want it we get 50 ohms down here everywhere else. And that's exactly what we want. And that's how a diplexer works. That's how you use your software to get a rough idea of the values and then start playing. Like if this was not in frequency of what I wanted, I could start playing with these. If I noticed that my output here was, was 
maybe it was too low. Okay, if it was too low, that means that my inductance and my capacitance probably needs to come down a little bit to increase the frequency. So you can play with this and get just what you want, which is what I've done with this. That's LT Spice. This is the circuit, the basic circuit that uh, I'm going to build up. So we're going to get ready to go to the next stage, which is transferring this over, trying to get components to match as close as we can to this, and then tweaking it in real life as a proto to see how it comes out. Now we'll be doing that on another video. We don't want this video to be too long. So I will pick up in the next video of this series and we will go ahead and create this, put it on the spectrum analyzer, and we'll take a look and see if it does what we really want. If we like how the prototype comes out, I'll go ahead and get a PCB made and build it up and we'll have another module for our radio ready. Hope you enjoyed and learned something from this and I hope to see you in another video.